Is cataract surgery boring? After all, we're just removing and replacing the natural lens with a lens implant. And we do it over and over, thousands of times during the career of an ophthalmologist. The short answer in my experience is no, it never gets boring. Why? Because if you really care about doing great work, then there's a drive for perfection. With each cataract surgery, the goals are actually very diverse and involve a varied skill set. For each surgical procedure, we have to answer many questions. Number one, can I achieve as perfect an outcome as possible using techniques and tricks that I've acquired and learned over my lifetime? Number two, can I finish this task as efficiently as possible with the least amount of wasted time, materials, and complete it with optimal safety? Number three, how can I perform this task better now than I have in the past? Number four, when unusual situations arise, can I problem solve to finish the mission safely? And lastly, number five, when we encounter stressful situations, can I control my emotions to complete the mission while managing my surgical team and making sure the patient experience is smooth? It's easy to think. This procedure is so routine that it must get repetitive and redundant and boring. If it gets boring, then the operator has plateaued in their skills and has reached a period of complacency and stagnation. If surgery was repetitive and redundant, then robots could perform surgery. They can't. Why? Because despite perfect planning and preparation, Murphy always shows up. This case illustrates that concept. This is a 64-year-old patient who's having laser lens replacement with the panoptics toric lens to correct his presbyopia and astigmatism and to enable him to see far, mid, and near without glasses. His primary complaint is that he cannot read without using glasses full-time. His preoperative vision without glasses is 20-30 far, and J5 or 2040 near. His refraction is plus 0.5 plus 2 at axis 180, yielding 20-20 vision. This is elective laser lens replacement. It's not medically necessary, and the patient is paying entirely out of pocket for the procedure. This case begins in a routine fashion. Under eye drop anesthetic, we enter the eye and remove the cataract in a routine fashion using divide and conquer techniques. Now that the nucleus has been removed safely, we proceed to irrigation and aspiration of the cortical lens material. Everything is going fine. Now you see these little strands, these strands of cortex. Some surgeons will leave them and that allows them to complete the case faster. I find that leaving them increases the need for a YAG capsulotomy in the post-operative period. So I'm pretty meticulous about removing cortical fibers. Here I'm using a silicone tipped irrigation and aspiration instrument. and I'm vacuuming the posterior capsule very gently like I routinely do, but in this case, I pull on the capsule too hard using this instrument and the capsule breaks. So in my attempt to clean the capsule as perfectly as I can, I took a risk. And the risk was I might break the capsule. So here we've opened the capsule, which is a known complication of cataract surgery. The question is, how do we manage it? Well, we don't let the anterior chamber collapse. We fill the eye with viscoelastic. In this case, I use OcuCoat and I fill the anterior chamber before I remove my irrigation and aspiration instrument. Now I then coat the cornea with additional viscoelastic. Again, this is OcuCoat. And it provides us an optimal view of the interior structures of the eye. And we can see the broken posterior capsule. We place AmVisc Plus into the capsular bag to create space and tension on the posterior capsule. Then we use an MST capsulorexis forceps to grab this tag of the posterior capsule 
and remove it so we have a smooth round edge. Now you can see at 10 o'clock there's still a little edge that comes to a point. It's not a round edge. We need to create a round edge to make a round posterior capsular axis. So we use the MST capsular axis forceps to grasp the posterior capsule and then we use a trick to pull the capsule toward the center of the eye and that bring it that rescues the posterior capsule from moving too far posteriorly. We've now created a posterior capsular axis safely and that allows us to place this panoptics toric lens implant into the capsular bag. We have not needed to do a vitrectomy because we identified the opening in the posterior capsule immediately, maintained pressure in the anterior chamber to prevent vitreous prolapse, and then we create the once we've in, once we've inserted the implant and rotated it into the correct alignment, we've created a barrier between the anterior and posterior chambers of the eye. We remove the viscoelastic using additional irrigation and aspiration techniques. And at the end of the case, the toric lens is perfectly aligned, perfectly centered, and we've, we've successfully completed the procedure despite having an intraoperative complication. This is the appearance of the eye on postoperative day one. His postoperative vision without glasses is now 2025 far and J1 or 2025 near. His refraction is Plano. Most importantly, he is happy with his vision without glasses and can now read comfortably without glasses from his eye with the panoptics lens. Based on his positive experience and the improved vision, he now chooses to have his second eye corrected one week later with the same type of lens implant. So, cataract surgery never seems boring. It's a constant challenge to master the technical, emotional, and human skills that will create the safest, most efficient, and best visual outcome that will ultimately make the patient happy so they can experience the rest of their lives with the best vision possible. But it is the mindset that makes it challenging and interesting. From my perspective, each surgical case is an opportunity to Number one, improve someone's life by improving their vision, which at its core is simply helping other people. Number two, improve the team working with me by sharing knowledge during and after the procedure. And finally, number three, personally improve by challenging myself to perfect the array of skills necessary to create the best experience for the patient and the team. There are so many variables that we have to manage during cataract surgery. One of these variables involves taking risks. Everything in life, including surgery, has risks. But in order to achieve the greatest rewards in life, you have to take risks. And by taking risks, we ultimately learn to solve problems that make us better surgeons and allow us to deliver the best possible care for our patients. Thank you for your time and have a wonderful day.